So in this uh, short video, I am going to be talking about what monitoring and evaluation is, the different types of monitoring and different types of evaluation. I would also try and explain the differences between monitoring and evaluation uh, because so many times we, we might want to mix them even though they are for the same purpose and that's why they're together. And we'll look at different approaches to monitoring and evaluation, some of the approaches anyways. I mean, in literature, there's a whole bunch of approaches that are that is in existence currently and also for the future purpose. Then we'll discuss targets of your monitoring and evaluation. So if you look at your own civil society organization, what should you be monitoring and what should you be uh, what should you be monitoring? and evaluating this is uh, uh, very important don't forget put your comments questions and suggestions in the classroom because it is in the classroom that uh, most of the back and forth uh, happens and things that we might not necessarily focus on uh, in this video we might we will be able and happy to discuss it um, as well so uh, what's monitoring and evaluation and and you can uh, let's say you can think about this as um, the result from my organization. So um, it is something that allows you to look at um, what results you are achieving. Um, for example, if you're, if you're a non-government organization that tends to improve livelihoods amongst uh, young women that are sexually ab abused or, or exploited or trafficked, and you've been established for the past five years, how do you now uh, in five years say that oh we have actually been able uh, to improve the livelihoods of uh, of this group of women um, or if you if your program as an NGO focuses on increasing the number of children with disabilities in basic education uh, for example then you might want to think about okay are we actually achieving such a uh, such goal of our, our organization goal is this something we are achieving um, if it is to empower women in order for them to have access to justice um, if you want to look back and say oh we have been able to give to ensure that women have access to justice really then you think about monitoring and evaluation um, as a as a management tool that you can use um, here to understand if your organization is achieving results and not only that also to think about how to improve such programs because i mean most times uh, it's about learning and improving the program that you have started and not necessarily you yeah being able to achieve it because there's so many things that uh, your program so the environment in which your program operates has so many external factors that can affect it as well. So uh, that's monitoring and evaluation. You can think about it like your organization trying to look at, yeah, what has worked or what is working or what is not working at all. So creating such kind of system makes monitoring and evaluation a, a management tool for your organization to improve um how your organization achieve its results um so what is monitoring itself um so think about i mean there's there's the new buzzword like oh uh, the monitoring spirits so think about monitoring spirit spirits that are watching over you um every day trying to look at how you wake up how you um how you do the things you do the activities you do moving from a to b uh, then back to your house then sleeping so think about having a system like that for the life of your initiative or program or your organization as well uh, because yes it could be about your organization so uh, monitoring looks at uh, a very routine way of collecting such data oh did you sleep how long did you sleep for um, how long did you travel from A to B on day one how much did you travel from 
A to B in day two. How much did you travel from day three to day four? Also, think about it as an example, maybe of a program that hopes to, as part of the activity, is to uh, sensitize um, women about their rights as uh, as it is enshrined in the in the administration of criminal justice system for example you might think about every activity uh, every step everything that is included in such maybe a workshop is being organized um, you think about all oh, those that attended the program you want to get the attendance register you can think about um, maybe checking calls with the women that are in the program you can think about oh looking at the, the the training manual that was developed for that so um how it has been distributed has it been distributed to a household b household c household that is what we refer to as monitoring it, it, it is always uh, so it's it's a continuous collection of data for the activities that you uh, that you carry out within your your project which in turn hopes to add also um, to the objectives of your project that's monitoring evaluation is is uh, so so let us take a look at the types of monitoring you can have um, so you could have process monitoring technical monitoring assumption monitoring you could have financial monitoring what is process monitoring um, you can think about process monitoring as yeah a routine data collection of what you have outlined in what you're going to provide for the program or the tasks and activities uh, that you have said leads to results so for example is one of the example i, I just gave uh, i mean if your program focuses on for example um, advocating for health budget in in a community or in a state then you want to think about different activities that you do okay maybe workshops maybe radio programs maybe um um maybe uh developing a toolkit uh so think about these three activities you will uh want to monitor for example okay how many people have received your toolkit you will want to uh monitor how many workshops you're going to hold and how many people would attend that workshop if you created a radio program oh how many times will your radio program be heard so it's about what has been done and and how has it been done and that's what process monitoring is all about um, in terms of technical monitoring if we use the same example of of the budget advocacy uh, program uh, and you can think about that as oh okay let us look at the strategy we are using to deliver for example the radio program so um who who and who uh, is anchoring the radio program for instance um so um how was the radio program designed do we have a script can we look at the script uh when did they develop the script so it looks at the technical aspect of of uh, of of the program and if it's a program that hopes to empower women uh to understand their rights for example or, or to be able um to hold their leaders accountable yeah you can think about oh we have designed um a toolkit for them to use in the community so we want to look at so in technical monitoring you can look at the toolkit itself how it was developed um, um, what's the content of it as well so uh, that is what technical monitoring is all about it focuses on the strategies you have tried putting in place if you say you if, um, it's an advert you want to be using in advocating in making uh for example women groups um to all their leaders accountable then you want to look at the you will focus on the advert how many times was it heard um on the radio or on tv or, or on the social media for example i mean it's it's the age of facebook and, and twitter um so that's technical monitoring uh you can do assumption monitoring like i said earlier on your programs or your projects 
um, they exist, they are implemented uh, within external factors. And you might want to think of those external factors uh, as it affects the success or failure of your project. So um, like we could also use the example of, of, for example, your workshops now. So some of us might have planned workshop in a community, for example. Um, but you need to factor in the day you are going to hold the workshop, right? So that it is not on a market day when, so if the workshop is focused on women, for example, you don't want to put it on, on a market day where women will not attend. So um, you need to, so you monitor that like, oh, the assumptions that we have given that, oh, women will be available on this day. Did it work at all? So that's a, that's a, a a simple example but we can look at it like yes assumptions might include that oh um, security um, the insecurity in that part of the state um, might uh, might affect the project because you might have assumed that while planning your project then you want to monitor oh during the the duration of a program, the, the insecurity actually affected the program. Um, so that, that's another thing. Also think about a project that hopes to uh, provide books, for example, knowledge books for children um, in, in primary school, for example, um, in order to improve their knowledge on reading, uh, reading and, and writing, for example. Um, you might, you might have that assumption that, oh, children or pupils in primary schools do not have a reading, do not have an extra reading and writing textbook, right? Um, and you want to provide that. So that's the assumption for providing the textbook. Um, imagine that by the time you now wanted to start the program, um, there was a policy, government policy, which allow for the creation of reading and writing textbook and that has been awarded and approved to another person. Um, so while you're starting your program, you just find out that, oh, there's another reading and writing book which the pupils will use. So you monitor that, just making sure that, oh, that assumption um, has not been eroded uh, by, a pro by, by, by government policy. You could also think about financial monitoring. I mean, um, by by the start of your program, you would have budget, sent a budget to your donor that this is the amount you have a budget and this is the amount you're going to expend uh, as well as a plan. But it's very highly, it's highly likely that things changes um, during the time uh, you submit that budget and also the time you're going to implement the program so you need to you need to factor that in and start monitoring your budget line so for example if you have said oh you're going to do um, five workshops in x community and five workshops in x community might uh, might cost uh, one thousand naira so but for each workshop, for each training or sensitization program, it means it's 200 Naira. Um, things might change along the line and, and um, you spend 300 Naira on one. So you need to factor that in the first one, 300 Naira. That means you have 700 Naira left. So you need to be monitoring that so that you can tell the program team that, oh, we need to adjust uh, how, we're spending, how we have spent for the first one or the second one and and think about so uh you could do fund financial training so in a whole i mean you could think about this four ways of of monitoring and be able to document them that's the most important thing i know some of us are already doing this but it is just for us to know that yes these are different types of monitoring that can be carried out um so evaluation which is um, attached to monitoring all the time um, think about it as as a yeah periodic assessment of of your programs or your projects or even the policy that you have in your organization so note that in this training uh, 
we, can, we, we are referring to projects, programs, policies, even the organization as a whole can actually be monitored and evaluated. We will discuss that uh, shortly. Um, so uh, evaluation is always periodic, um, so it's not necessarily continuous. Remember the analogy that I gave about you, yeah, sleeping, waking up, moving from A to B, um, then you get back from B to A, A is your home, then you now sleep again or eat and sleep. So, I mean, evaluation would not necessarily be collecting data at, at each stage. It might be, okay, five, it just, it might be uh, three months, uh, for example, that's a quarter, right? And it now looks at, oh, how you have slept, how you have woken up, the foods you are eating, collect data about it. And at times, it uses the data you have actually you collected during your day-to-day -day collection of data. So that's what evaluation is all about. Um, think about your program at the moment. And think about, you. So, for example, if it's a two-year program, or, or, or if it's a two-year program, for example, you might want to think about, oh, okay, we need to conduct an evaluation at the end of each year. So, and not necessarily monthly. Monitoring does, yeah, monthly collection of data, but evaluation could be that one year. Yeah, after one year, we do an evaluation. After the second year or at the close of the program, we conduct an evaluation as well. So, um, so that's uh, what evaluation is. And also that evaluation have different types. And, and, and most times it's about the duration. Of, of which you you are using to cook to or the time your the period you want to collect data um, as well. So we have um, here we have outlined four types and don't forget in some other literatures you might see more than uh, more than this number. So um, you could have formative evaluation, uh, which is um, formative evaluation, midterm evaluation, summative evaluation and exposed evaluation. Um, um, so formative evaluation is also known as, yeah, what you call the baseline study. Uh, very, very important and key for your programs. All your programs should have a baseline study. Uh, when we discuss in, in week two, uh, planning data collection and also data analysis and findings, you will know how important baseline study is. Um, yeah, it is done always at the beginning of a program. It allows you to understand. So, for instance, if you have a program that hopes to increase the number of children with disabilities in basic education, for example, um, it is important that you, that you know, uh, especially where your program is going to be implemented. So, if it's in a community in Kano, for example, or a community in Lagos, uh, or, or in Sokoto, for example, um, you need to find out at first, okay, how many children, uh, how many um, children with disabilities are not uh, in basic education, for example, in that community. It could be small as that. Um, then you can collect such data uh, and use it to inform your program. Okay, who are these children? What are their ages? Are they living with their families and, and all that? So you can think about um, that as, as an approach. Think about the population, how many are they? What's their age? What's their sex? I um, mean, you know, this will definitely, will now inform how you design your program. And that's what formative evaluation uh, is all about. It also allows you to, yeah, understand your target audience. So for instance, if you're, if your program is about uh, advocating uh, for health budget, increase in health budget in your state, you want to know what is the status at the moment, how much is being spent at the moment, uh, how many primary health care do you have in that locality or community that you're working in, um, how much is being spent on, on, on prophylaxis, for example, uh, which is a drug, right? Um, how much is being spent on on equipment that are used uh, in a primary health care 
um, different kind of drugs, malaria drugs and all that. So you need to understand that and, and now put your, oh, okay, how many women um, had visited some of these PhDs? So informative evaluation can be, yeah, it could be small, it could be large size, but I mean, think about it as something focused on your program uh, as it were. Um, so it is done before your program starts and, and it allows you to answer the question of who would be your target audience, um, how you will reach them, when they will be available for your program and, and all that. Uh, you could have a mid-time evaluation. So like I explained earlier, if your program is three years or your pro project is three years or if it's one year, um, think about Yes, from the day, from the start of implementing the program, um, think so. If, if it's a year, for example, okay, your pro, let's assume your program will start in 2020 and ends by the end of 2020. Then you think about oh, in June we will do an evaluation. We will, which will uh, just focus on looking at um, if we are actually if our activities are actually uh, leading us to the objectives of the program. So uh, at times it's called mid-term reviews. It allows us to review all our activities uh, that has been carried out. Um, so oh, sensitization that we have done, we said we at the beginning, we said we're going to do 10. Oh, we have already done seven. Why have we done only seven? Or if we, oh, we have only done three. Why did we do only three? What is happening? What can we change? How can we uh, look at another way of doing it? Or, oh, we have said we are going to distribute 20,000 information, education, and communication materials to people in the community, but we've only printed uh, just 500. Oh, we have not hired the graphics person that would design it. So, uh, the midterm evaluation allows us to know where we are in terms of the activities uh, as well. So, um, summative, you can have summative evaluation, which is always done immediately the project ends. So, at the end of one year of that program that you've planned to conduct, yes, you do your evaluation you conduct the evaluation and i mean it, it this now focuses on oh have we achieved did we achieve the output or are there immediate outcomes that we can quickly harvest from uh, from our evaluation that's what we refer to as summative evaluation um exposed you can have exposed evaluation this is always done um exposed evaluation is always done um maybe years after the project program has ended. So if your program has uh, a two year duration, for example, let's say 2020 to 2022, um, if it ended in 2022, maybe uh, so ex post evaluation can be conducted um, in 2024, for example. And this is when you have external evaluators and you could think about this as an evaluation led uh, kind of m and &E. Um, when we talk about approaches, we will discuss that. So, um, yes, um, it, it, it's conducted. So this is where evaluations are conducted to actually know if your program or project contributes to, uh, to an outcome or to an impact, to a larger impact. So, so it tries to capture, yes, um, what really your program or your project has, um, has changed um, because the program is about uh, change. So knowing fully well that yes, you can you do monitoring and you do evaluation on one hand, even though they go hand in hand, like I said, uh, and one way it does go hand in hand is that yes, data from monitoring can also be used during evaluation. Yes, what you have collected, during your several activities, rallies, meetings, advocacies, um, workshops, seminars. Yes, when the time comes for evaluation, maybe at the end of the year, that data, the attendance register, 
uh, the post evaluation of your activities, your pre activities can be used during evaluation um, to make some sense uh, and get some findings uh, of if those activities are actually speaking to your objectives or if it will meet with the project objectives. Um, so uh, the differences, the differences between uh, monitoring and, and evaluation uh, as well. So, I mean, the differences between them and a major one which we've uh, highlighted is that, yes, monitoring is always ongoing, uh, it's continuous, it's like every day, every month, a monthly collection of data or collection per program, per activity, while evaluation is done at a specific time. Um, during halfway to your to your program, um, at the start of your program, or two years after your program, yeah, that's what evaluation does. Um, monitoring is about internal activities, right? Um, yeah, because it's largely internal. The program officer, the uh, the project assistants, they are the ones um, taking the registers. They are the ones um, recording the program. They are the ones administering. Um, pre-evaluation, post-evaluation for each of the program. They are the ones interviewing the beneficiaries that are taking part in the programs. So most times monitoring is internal. Um, evaluation, yes, like I said, most times is external uh, and can be participatory as well. Uh, but recently, the, I mean, evaluation can now be done internally and, and that's why the European Union Art Program um, is here yes, so that uh, once you can create an m and &E system for your organization, then internally you can evaluate uh, your programs as well and not wait until there's an external uh, evaluator that comes to evaluate it. Yeah. Um, but same monitoring is the responsibility of management. Um, yes, because it's internalized in house, so think about that. Uh, while an evaluator will, together with the staff and management, conducts evaluation. Um, in monitoring, don't forget, yes, you could get continuous feedback. I mean, if you, for example, you plan to do uh, a sensitization program in a, in a marketplace or, or at a mall or in a market or in a, um, in, in, in an identified location, yes, you could once you finish it, because you are monitoring it, you are monitoring such a sensitization. At the end of it, you can quickly get a feedback from those that attended or participated um, in it. Or you've distributed an IEC material uh, for, for those that IEC is information, education and communication material. So like your posters, um, like your handbills, um, um, also could be on Twitter or could be on Facebook, um, you might want to get feedback quickly from people that have access to such IEC materials or the sensitization program or the workshop. So you, you, could, you get continuous, but if it's an evaluation, you need to wait. So you only get a periodic feedback. And that's the beauty of this. It means that, yes, you could get feedback in between and, and use the two feedback, I mean, to always um, evaluate and adapt your activity, the activities of your programs uh, for it to meet the set objectives. That, that's what uh, that means. But let's take a pause a little bit. We've, we've discussed monitoring and evaluation. We've looked at the differences um, in this training. Um, from your own experience, from what you have been doing, um, is there any difference from what we have discussed so far uh, are you getting insight on something new or is this totally different to what you have uh, thought about when people say monitoring and evaluation or what you have thought before? Please put a comment um, in the classroom comment box. Uh, that will be very useful um, for conversation within the, between the participants or amongst the participants uh, as it might be. Um, so let's look at different approaches to monitoring and evaluation. Yes, there are different approaches. Um, one is the theory-based approach. You have the expert-oriented, you have result-based, you have 
participatory approach, you have the evaluation-led approach. There are so many approaches that have come out of these approaches. Um, so, for example, in the participatory approach, we have now had social justice approach. We now have indigenous appro indigenous approach. Um, so you could think about so many approaches coming out from this. But let's let's look at each of the approaches as it applies to the work that we do. And don't forget that the kind of approach, the type of approach that you use would inform how your monitoring and evaluation framework is being used. Um, so the expert-oriented approach. So if you if you thought, think about your institution, your learning institution, your your school, right? Um, either primary school, secondary school, the university. Um, what you see there is that yes, you you always write tests, right? You write exams, um, and also for your pro for professional bodies as well, you write tests, you write exams. That is a type of, is also what we refer to as monitoring and evaluation approach, and it is called expert-oriented because there's always one answer to it, right? Um, and and the, that has been designed by the, the professional who you are writing is your exams, right? Um, at the beginning of this course, you, you I, I believe at this point, before getting to this, you must have, um, completed the pre-training uh, uh, knowledge assessment. So that's an example of, of, of an approach, right? To, to monitor and evaluate your knowledge around monitoring and evaluation. And that is how it is. Um, mostly used in academics, uh, mostly used in professional associations to monitor and evaluate their members uh, as well. So there is the popular one, the theory-based approach. So this is the most common approach. This is one of the most one of the most common approach that is being used. Uh, yeah, I can also say maybe the most common because um, so this involves um, a theory of change, right? So we say it is theory-based because at the beginning of the program, you will create a theory, and this forms a larger part of module two uh, of this training. So you, what this means is, yes, by the time you're getting into the program, when you want to design your program, you have a theory already that states that, oh, I need to do, I need to provide A and do B before I can get an output or I can get an outcome uh, before I can reach my project objective. So um, think about it as, as a theory that you create, like, like for example, oh, um, for me to be able to um, strengthen dialogue mechanisms between community-based organizations and the local government uh, authority, then um, I need to provide toolkits as resources for the community-based organizations. I need to do uh, conduct workshops with the community-based organizations. I need to um, um, create town hall meetings between the local government authority and community-based organizations uh, for them to get more learnings or learn more about, um, learn more about um, how to uh, how to, for instance, advocate for budget, advocate for more services in their community, then which will now lead to, oh, uh, yes, a good, a good dialogue mechanism between both of them. Yes, they can now talk, have a two-way communication, uh, and that leads to the objective. So you can, you can think about that as a, as a theory, right? Um, oh, for, for women to get uh, speedy justice, oh, uh, we need to provide um, the, uh, uh, the the VAR Pact, for example, the Violence and Protection uh, um, Act, right, to the women, for them to know, then we train them, we sensitize them about it, then they know uh, the provisions that will allow them to quickly hold uh, the legal system accountable or the leaders accountable or their uh, the torturer or the abuser 
uh, and which will then lead to oh them having more knowledge about it then them having more knowledge about it means that oh they will now be able to report to the right authority so i mean that's a theory that you've designed before the program start, and we call it a theory based approach and what that means is that yes monitoring and evaluation will now focus on each of those theories uh, that you have uh, uh, that you have um, far profound that and, and you can think about so this here is an example of of what that looks like and, and this is an example of um, of an organization that is trying to yeah I mean create more inclusive and accountable society and this is the organization theory of change we'll talk about more about this in in module two and that of accountability lab um, so don't forget if you have questions and comments please put it in the comment box and uh, there's the result based monitoring and evaluation approach this is mostly used by country governments um, in order for them to yes actualize the goals uh, of, of maybe sectoral goals it could be multi-sectoral goals it could be national goals um, so result based and m and &E, uh, focuses on yeah how activities and outputs gets uh, uh, creates the impact that an organized that uh, that the national country government is trying to achieve so uh, i mean in result based m and &E, yes this is where you start talking about the national plans of the country and and how several organizations contribute uh, to achieving the goals in that national plan so we, we time in the result based m and &E. Uh, approach um, so it takes more of the management directions uh, as um, three components in it the, uh, the people it looks at the organizational structure the human capacity within a system then it also has the part that focuses on yeah different aspects of, of data management talk about routine monitoring periodic surveys databases that you have created uh, then it has the last part which is yes then using information to improve results uh, result based monitoring and evaluation yeah always this kind of approach uses like a seven year uh, yeah six to seven year approach looking at different sectoral programs policies um, as well so you can think about this kind of approach being used by governments of different countries so for example nigeria could be using this approach uh, in order to understand how different organizations are contributing to um, maybe the uh, yeah the vision 2020 but i mean vision 2020 is almost over now um, maybe it's the economic growth and recovery plan which is also ending this year or the next national plan i think there's a new talk about a 10-year national plan so this result-based monitoring and evaluation approach will be good for that let's think about the evaluation led um yes i mean think about uh exposed evaluation um so this, the, the kind of theory you developed for this will definitely uh, look at yes coming back to look at uh, what has changed in the program or in the project in the last five years or so and and it will definitely look at only the evaluation part of things and a little bit of monitoring uh, also as well um, there's a participatory approach, um, which means that when you're developing your monitoring and evaluation plan, um, so for example, um, uh, let's think about um, a program that hopes to reduce corruption um, in, in, for example, in Sokoto, hopes to reduce cor corruption in, in, in so corruption that happens during public procurement in different local governments in in Sokoto states uh, so you can you can think about um, going to Goronyo for example and 
sitting with community members there, the local government, and designing your M&A plan from them. So instead of you designing a theory of change yourself before the program starts or an M&A plan, um, so the M&A plan would have all key members, working groups, uh, different groups, market groups, uh, mechanic groups, um, carpentry groups, coming together to design the m and &E plan and also looking at, uh, for instance, different uh, budgets that will be put in place. So collection of data will be participatory, will be collective. You will not have one person collecting data. So data will be collected by the communities themselves. And also that, I mean, if it's if it's looking at corruption in local government, that means yo, you need the local government chairman also to come to the seat as well and also identify their own rules. Oh, we are going to provide the data for the budget, right? Um, so what we will do is be able to provide data as at when you need it in terms of budgeting. So some people, so this is also the kind of approach that is used in participatory budgeting. Um, as well. So when you're defining the indicators, you also sit down with the communities and say, oh, so what the success looks like at, at stage A, if we have been able to sensitize ourselves, what do we want to see as success? So something like that we, we refer to as uh, participatory. So um, this takes us to the last part, which is yes, M&A target. So We've been talking about M&E, we've been introduced ourselves to monitoring and evaluation. What do we monitor and evaluate? Very, very important for us to know as an organization, as a civil society organization. One, you can monitor and evaluate your projects. And when we, what we mean by a project is, yes, I mean, you could compare uh, what is happening in two different projects that you are um, actually delivering on. Um, maybe in two different local governments is, is actually possible. Projects are single intervention. Um, so um, if you're trying to improve livelihoods uh, among farmers in one community versus community B, so you could look at the two projects and, and just try and monitor and evaluate such projects um, as well. And, and, and that's an example. Uh, of it. Now, think about programs. Um, you could monitor and evaluate programs. So, for, for, for the program that hopes to improve livelihoods amongst, uh, let's say, small older farmers in Community A and Community B as a project, it might have a common program which might be called um, Farmers Borrowers Program, for example. Uh, but in the Farmers Borrowers Program, there's a component of it, which is a project which hopes to also yeah, improve the seedlings that is being used by these farmers in, in, in A and B. So um, the Anchor Borrowers Program of, of Nigeria uh, is now a program that you might want to evaluate. But don't forget it as it can have different activities in it. And I know that some of you are also part of that. Um, also think about the uh, an example of, of a program that you can also monitor and evaluate um, could be um, um, could be the um, the social welfare program uh, of of the um, of this present administration, which some of you are also part of as well. So you have underneath it, you have the um, you have the um the food you have the food uh food program that has been uh, which allows you to give allow people to give out um food uh to young pupils um as well i've forgotten the acronym for for that now but i mean it's uh so you have that you also have the end power as well it's under the the social welfare program uh, one welfare program. So, but think about your own organization now. You can have different portfolios of programs. So, maybe under the health program, you have three projects. Under the um, edu your education program, you have the three. 
So you might just want to focus on evaluating the whole program. So if you have three projects on that one program, you want to look at the whole project as a whole. So that's what we refer to as uh, targeting programs. You could have policies. I mean, the, in your organization, you have travel policies, you have um, governance policy, you have um, finance policy, you have human resources policy. It would be nice at one point to, uh, in fact, imperative that you monitor and evaluate the use of those policies so that it is not just a document um, that is in the cupboard or just on our laptops, but you need to understand if the policies are actually achieving the objectives they were developed for. So, for example, you could have travel policies, which whose objective is to, yes, uh, make sure staffs uh, 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 to inform staffs on on what they can do during travels or, or, or the, the processes they need to go through for travels. Then you can monitor and evaluate it as staffs using it or what's the extent to which staff have used it in the past three months, in the past three years. And all. So you can think about it uh, as, as that, like you can monitor and evaluate your policy. You can monitor your organization as well. Um, for example, you, you have a mission, you have a vision for your organization. Your organization was created based on a vision. Um, so for example, if, if, you, if the vision that organizes your organization is, is saying that, oh, you, you want to foresee a future when, yeah, every woman can, every woman can have access to, uh, to speedy justice. So, Think about it. Um, in the last five years, have your are all the programs that your organization are, is running, is it attached to, yes, making sure that women uh, are, are going to be having speedy justice? Is it focusing on meeting that vision that your organization was established for? So, your organization, you can also do, yeah, the monitoring and evaluation of your own uh, organization just to make sure that the organization is, not, is on the right track and not following the vision or the mission of other organizations. Very, very important for civil society organization. Yes, you can monitor and evaluate different sectors uh, like a, a, so what's happening in agri, in health, in education, in the social justice, uh, social welfare. So you, you could monitor and evaluate that as well. I mean, um, think about it like you're having different departments in the organization. One focuses on agriculture, one focuses on health. Yeah, you can think about, okay, let's see what's happening uh, within those. Uh, you can focus on different teams. Um, yes, I mean, gender equity, poverty alleviation, the global public good. So, I mean, specific issues um, you can monitor and evaluate it um, as well um, could be yes pandemics uh, response to pandemics just like we have and, and all that uh, yeah monitoring and evaluation can also focus on country assistance and this is focused on 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 donor agencies whereby yes i mean they put in they assist multilateral agencies and bilateral agencies assist country government so and they want to look at oh okay what have we learned in in the programs that has been implemented by civil society organization versus country government so that that could be uh, something that could be monitored and and evaluated uh, as well so this course actually has a, a, a so there's a learning task um, that you're supposed to complete um, for this, uh, which is, yes, I mean, you have been appointed to lead the monitoring and evaluation unit of your organization. So you need to identify programs and projects. Just think about it. Yes, I mean, in this, in this uh, training, we've been using programs and projects together because we know your civil society organization. Most of it might be projects, but just list it. Um, so what you just need to do is to... Uh, list uh, programs right uh, underneath here for each one then what's the goal of the project so the goal which is the overall 
uh, goal we will discuss this actually in length in, in, in module 2 then what are the objectives you can have different objectives uh, per goal for, for the goal of your organization, right? So you write the program, write the goal, write the objectives of it for each one and you will definitely, so, uh, I will show us in a moment. Um, so there are references to this first module which you can also get in the classroom. So we have all these books um, in the classroom. Then useful websites for you to quickly go through as well. Very important. Um, uh, for you to complete some of the tasks and I mean um, in summary I mean we've looked at what monitoring is what evaluation is what's the difference between it uh, monitoring yes I mean does continuous collection of data while evaluation does periodic um, also that yes the different types of monitoring different types of evaluation monitoring you could have process monitoring you could have technical monitoring you could have assumption monitoring and um, in evaluation you could have yes formative evaluation you could have evaluation at the beginning of the program at the mid of the program which is called midterm reviews and also uh, at the end which is summative then you could have uh, some years after the program has completed then um, we also looked at yes different approaches to evaluation as well which is yes you could have theory based which looked at the theory of change you could have the expert oriented which is yes academics where professionals tell you what is a and tells you your level um, you could have um, participatory yes which in which you develop your m and &E plan with the communities that you work in uh, as well so and we also looked at different targets for evaluation um, the targets meaning what you can monitor and evaluate so you have programs you can monitor your programs you can monitor your policies you can monitor and evaluate your organization as a whole and don't forget i said that's very very important different uh, parts of your organization you could uh, monitor and evaluate you can evaluate different sectors uh, different teams that your organization work on um, as well and I mean um, that uh, brings to an end uh, module one and remember I said there's this task we are supposed to complete which you're supposed to put in program uh, goal and objectives for each one uh, in module two, you will be picking one of these programs as your case study till the end of this training. So make sure that these are programs your organization are focusing on, might be focusing now, or maybe you're at the point of writing a proposal for it. So, um, so that's just to uh, 